so that was my last bit of footage of that particular trip to Kingsbury and uh, I've chosen this this uh, you know, nice little woodland path just flowing through there um, yeah put the faint ones in first faint trees and then I think sort of dry the background and then put the uh, the nearer trees in and you should get a nice contrast so sort of wind this path around a bit more and uh, yeah let's have a go at this one so I quickly whiz through the materials. You'll see a list of all this gear below in the description in every video on the on here. Um, we've got ultramarine blue, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizardine crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. Three brushes, large on rancinate, three quarter inch flat and number three rigger. The paints are all Cutman watercolours, squeezed out and allowed to dry on the palette. We've got our tissue, watercolour, water jar, 15 by 11 Fabriano and our tea towel up there drying from the last session. So I'm going to start off clean water, just give it a good, hang on, switch the light on that's better just uh, clean water all the way over the paper evenly, that way the, the paper will stretch evenly and you've got to bother pre-stretching it You can't see much of the sky, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, I'll just, well, it's sort of a dirty, dirty raw sienna. This one, it's got a bit of paint on it from the last one, but it doesn't matter, it all adds to the character of the paint in whatever uh, colours you put on. So, there's a bit of that. Let's just stick a bit of blue just to hint at some sky showing through the trees. A bit of blue, no need to go crazy with it. Bring that right down into the foreground, and then I might just put a bit of a uh, raw sienna, a sort of sort of a sort of variety of greens, just to put a bit of background flavour in there. Not, nothing too heavy. Soak up that water. And a bit more, a bit more of this green. And getting it in while the paper's still wet leaves it nice and uh, nice and soft. Now for some, uh, just to suggest a few trunks here and there. Um, actually, I might use the rigger first. So into those colours. And then I'm just going to pop a few. You can see, because it's still wet, it's, it sort of softens it off. Any of those, it just gives the impression of loads of trees and stuff in the background. So I'm going to switch back to the hike. I'm going to put in a another layer of slightly. These all look slightly stronger. These branches. Again, I'm just going to run these right off the top of the page. So I'm starting at the bottom and working my way up. Just bear in mind the path's going to be about there, so I want to leave that fairly clear. So I'll, I'll just put these on the left, and then there'll be some more on the right. You see, just very simply. Put in with the hike, and then like in a bit. Once it's dry, I'll uh, do a bit of dry brush on it.
Let's do the same on the other side. Just make sure the just enough water to keep the uh, the hairs together, so you get that sort of chiselled edge look. So the path's going to be about there and sort of wind round. So I want to leave that bit open. So I'll just just sort of frame it on this side. And then you'll notice as the paper dries, it'll it'll stop softening up and it'll just get stronger and stronger. And you see little branches coming off them. That's enough for the background. Paper strip, so I'm just going to pull it tight. Pull it tight so it's flat and then we're ready to go again. So next I think I'll do some uh, Let's put some stronger paint in now. I've got a like a big thick tree. There's a big tree on the right. So let's make it a bit really strong now. So it's a lemon yellow, Payne's grey, really strong green. And I'm just gonna just using the corner of the brush, just the corner. And you see it this nice sort of natural looking strokes coming off it. I'll just, just fill that in. And I want something just very, I'm just going to do it very lightly on this side. I don't want it as strong as that. Just to give the impression of a few leaves and Tweaks and what have you. Something. Just make that top bit a bit stronger. That's it. I don't want too much down the bottom. In the brush, and then maybe just a bit of raw sienna, burnt umber, just down here, ultramarine. Just working my way up to the edge of that path where that will start. Bit of snow there on the left hand side, so I've left little gaps just to uh, give the impression of some snow or something, whatever you want it to be. Um, now, there are a couple of tree trunks on the right and in front of those, uh, that mass of green there. So, let's put those in. So, I'm just going burnt umber, ultramarine, nice and dark. I mean. him in and then just to the right of him there's another one and there's just a few little twigs and stuff coming off that so I've switched to the rigger and then just flick those out Is 
Just uh, clean the brush and then just below that tree. In fact, I'll just switch back to the rigger for a sec. Same colours. And just a few little like tweaks and stuff. Just sticking out the ground. Let's just fix some of those in. Clean the brush and just on that right hand side we've got a bit of green, there's a bit of grass showing, so lemon yellow. Lemon yellow, a bit of lemon yellow on that side as well. A little bit of just dab into the ultramarine just to just so that you get a bit of variation, see all the different Variations coming off now. All I'm doing is just dab like that and then just dab like that. And see all the different colours. See all the different colours on the brush. That's why I never use just more, just never use just one colour off the palette. Always just have a quick dab, get those variations on, and then it just comes off nicely on the paper. And again. Just missing bits here and there, just to make it look like the white of the snow sticking through the grass. And there's a bit more on this side. It sort of comes around like that. Now the path. The path. I'm just giving light red. Ultramarine. Light red. And then I'm just going to just get where you're going to start from and then just sweep it round like that. Remember, don't go over the same piece more than once unless you have to. And you get all these nice. Nice, see when it breaks and stuff, it just looks like again it could be snow, it could be anything you want it to be really. Okay. And then just where it meets, let's just stick a bit more, uh, could be a bit of mud, anything, just where it meets. Plenty of water, I don't want this too strong. Um, and obviously the, the smaller you make the, the, the figure, the, the greater the scale of the picture will, will appear. So it's just, just a very simple little figure walking up. I'll give that a quick dry. Look out for these little reservoirs of water that are gathered at the bottom of the pipe because they'll start to creep up your pipe if you don't watch them. Which one of these is just his head, just a fraction. Just a touch stronger, that's it. I can actually see his head now.
think. Wow, well, just a couple of birds, I think, just flying amongst the trees. I think I'll call that one finished. Pop your signature down in the corner somewhere. And that's another another one done. So let's have a quick look at it. In fact, I have noticed something I've forgotten to do. I've left these tree trunks just sort of hovering in midair. So I'll just uh, Stick some under there, just stick some grass or something underneath them just so it doesn't look as if they're just just floating there. So I want the brush quite dry and then I'm going any colour you like really. Not much water. Let's just pop some in there, just get it nice and dark, just something nice and dark. Maybe one one other thing that could uh, might help um, a shadow. If you just imagine there's like a big tree or something on this side, just a shadow running across there might look all right. Um, often I use it's the same mix as we did the path with light red, ultramarine, but plenty of water, plenty of water. And this you just you got to go in one stroke. You can't mess about with shadows. So just just pop that in. Something like that. We're going to quick dry it. Maybe a bit too much water in that one, so you can't see that very well, but it's like a very faint shadow you can see from it coming across. So we're done with just a slightly stronger mix. Let's have a quick look at that. So there's the painting. Let's have a quick look at the photograph. You see, I've not really changed much from the composition. We've got uh, sort of some distant trees then, and then, the, like I said, once the uh, background's dry, put the put the nearer ones on, and they'll create a nicer sense of depth. Get a nice little winding path. But those sort of just a distant mass relay, just a few few rigger bits just to make it look like uh, some far away trees and then what I could have done was then put say another another layer of these in, sort of same strength as these big ones there in front of these, you'd have had sort of three layers of trees. Just using the corner of the hake to put those in. And then little figure. Obviously, the smaller you make your figure, the sort of the bigger the uh, the scale of the thing, and the more sort of grander. So and then a nice sweeping path leads us into that woodland scene by uh, Swan Paul in Kingsbury. Well, I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing. Any questions, please ask, and I'll see you again soon.